This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Well, hello, and how you doing? Welcome to Eva Talk. Gordon of the Techs are here. Welcome for another thrilling and exciting ride in the Ibachi Talk land. I got Rick the Fun Meister with me. Hey, That's Gordo. Sure. It's been a while. Yeah, been it here has. For a while. It's been good to be back. And that was yeah. fun. And we have Ray, Ray, look, God, I'm going to do it again. LaRue. LaRue, absolutely. I got it right. Yep. Ray LaRue. I just love this French spelling of your name, but I just, I just keep messing up. Yeah. Ray, La, Ray LaRue. And um, Ray has a really interesting background. I'll let him talk to you about it, but he's running for governor. I am. In the state of Hawaii. And... Um, as I've said to you before, I don't endorse any candidates, and I've had, any, uh, I've had many candidates on the show from many parties, and um, I don't have an opinion. I just want to get, hear their opinions and their thoughts and so on, and I welcome any other candidate that wants to come on the show, please come see us. We're more than happy to do that. Obviously, we focus a little bit on tech, so you sure. need to be up on that and, and so on. So let me ask you this first question, Ray. So where did you grow, where did you grow up? So I grew up outside of Boston, Massachusetts, so in a little town called Salem. You might remember it if you're I, yes. a historian. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. which uh, exactly. Been there. And um, I enlisted in the Marine Corps in 1980 um, as an infantry uh, kid reservist. Went through college after I graduated from college, commissioned into the Marine Corps, and left New England at that time, and spent 30 years in the Marine Corps. From there on, uh, 13 of it spent here on active wow. duty. And because of that, my children went through this public school system, and uh, they consider it home today. So, so what schools did they go to? Uh, Kailua Intermediate and Kalaheo. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, and then uh, I, re I came here, uh, my last job, Chief of Staff at Marine Forces Pacific, and then retired out of that job and have never left Hawaii. Yeah, never left Hawaii. Yeah. I know. When, it, when it grabs you, it just grabs you. It's mm -hmm. as expensive as it is. So, so, um, so my next question is, I've got to ask of anybody, because, you know, you know, well, we just met. So here's the thing is, we've just met. So we haven't had a set, chance to sit down, talk, or, yeah. or, or break bread together. No, I've watched your show a few times. Yeah, so yeah. yeah. <laughs> we haven't had a chance. So, so what even possesses you to want to run for governor? <laughs> well, I'd, I'd be lying if I said you were the first person to ask me that question. Yeah. In fact, all the folks that I, I needed to collect guidance from or my mentors were, you know, had the same question, though none of them have tried to talk me out of it. Right. Um, but you really have to do, and it took me a couple of weeks once asked if I would run to, to really do that soul searching. And, and, and uh, when I looked at the political landscape today, right. and I look at the state of the state, if you will, uh, in many different factors, um, my sense was that any vote would be a vote for the status quo. And a status quo vote right now in, in, in what I would consider it, a state of dire need mm -hmm. um, just does not move us in any measurable way into any sort of prosperous or growth economy type of an, an environment. Um, and then I looked at uh, you know just the, the monopoly that is the Democratic Party here, and I think for the Hawaii voter, uh, they just should have a choice. They should have a freshness of voice. It's, it's part of the part of the system, uh, and let them make their own minds up. But. Even our uh, congressional delegation is all one party. It's all and one party. Yeah, it's all yeah. one party. And we're going to talk about tech in a little bit. More sure. I wish we had an hour show now for this. But, but I, 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 I agree with you on this, that we've had this single party s system here for decades. And yet we Since still back to what? 18, oh, I'm sorry, not 18, <laughs> but 19, yeah, yeah, yeah. 19, statehood, 19, at least. Yeah, yeah. statehood. Yeah. statehood. Yeah. statehood. We had, and we had, a, we had a Republican governor, uh, Linda Lingle, a number of years ago. Yeah. But she, she was surrounded by a fully Democrat. Yeah. Senate and House, yeah. and you know, and I'm not picking one party versus the other, nope. but it's it's just it's it's the nature of the beast. It's it's what it will is. happen. But let's come back and take a look at your thing. So you you were involved with the D Department of Education. I was. So, so you in, you're, you've been in the system. I have been in that. the system. I was the Assistant Superintendent, Office of School uh, Facility Support Services, which is all the facilities development, r repair and maintenance, new build projects, school security and safety, food services, which is school lunch, school transportation. Didn't and, you have something to do with because. You came in, there was an audit that was done. That yeah. You came in afterwards. So I, uh, I got parachuted right into uh -oh. post-audit. <laughs> oh, oh, the training when, was helpful. Yes, with the, um, uh, you know, the, the legislature had just slashed the transportation budget because it was just skyrocketing right. out of control. The audit put, put that forward. And uh, they had just canceled uh, 
bus services for almost 2,000 students. The fiasco that was going and on. That's when I got a hold of the issue and, and, and said, okay, um, where, do we, where do we start? And uh, we brought that now into a, a model that actually does provide what I would consider contemporary bus transportation for almost the, you know, the ninth or tenth largest school district in the nation. And it does it with all the market drivers that do escalate insurance, gas, et cetera. Gas, mm -hmm. all this uh, mm -hmm. But it's got contemporary um, modality to it when I say, what I mean by that is routing software, looking at it, uh, just taking a forensic look at all of the, the things that, that guide routes. Uh, so that you have an efficient system. Yeah, I think so I you make better it, decisions. Yeah, plus we're saving to, money. Uh, yeah. To look at how to, how to get the kids. Right out, of the yeah. gate. Uh, right out of the gate and probably overall in the model, um, upwards around 10 to 20 as, as you go on. As you go on, as you go on. Wow. So, so you've had experience. So my point is I want to get people to realize it's not like you're just coming in from the outside. Yeah. You've been in it. You've seen it. Um, yeah. feel our, we all can feel our pain together. <laughs> yeah. he, but it sounds like... number guy. Yeah. But it sounds like you've brought a technology to to the job that perhaps wasn't there before yeah. to be able to make better decisions and make those better decisions faster than yeah than, than was happening and, and I think you can apply that to, to that. almost any situation for instance there are at 20 in 2018 with the advance of technology for mm -hmm. instance yeah. and you look at best practices right. and and there are best practices, and, and I, you should have no shame in, in, in stealing those best no, practices. Exactly. Well. So yeah. it's, it's a story I of mean, my life. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the best. And, and me too. Metrics. Exactly. And you look at metrics and everybody else and what, does. Yeah. And you're, you know, and you've been part of the deal. And so, you know, what are your perspectives on the education system in Hawaii? So, uh, I'm a, I'm an optimist by trade. So when I look at this DOE, and it's about. Uh, 257 schools, 30 some odd charter schools. It's got a 1.9 billion dollar operating budget. It's got about a half a billion biennium capital budget. Then when you look at the fringe, which oh by the way in 2018 in this session just went up to 56.5 percent. So you add all that up, ostensibly you'd think you'd have a pretty good system That's and a delivery a huge of education. Yeah. That's and, and yeah, and we're not. Um, in fact, there are great and, and high performing schools and parents aren't sending us their worst kids and we're not hiring the worst teachers. Right. But, and our kids aren't failing, but the system is failing our Damn. kids. So mm -hmm. while we put all of these, um, you know, one trick pony or two trick pony reform initiatives in with some, some pretty, you know, catchy phrases and whatnot, they've done nothing with regards to having a kid matriculate through that system and come I out totally on the other agree. side. Mm -hmm. So what we have to do, and, and the rest of the, the world understands this, look at Finland, is you have mm. to look at student-centered learning. While we were doing all of that, by the way, America changed. Um, the way that a kid learns, the way that a kid's going to, you know, They're collaborate with their, their, the kid next to them. It's, yeah. you and I grew up with a learning wall and a Horace Mann kind of a model with right. 30 seats facing the wall. That, that doesn't work anymore. Okay. So where I think we've failed is that, first of all, in a system like ours, the first thing that I would say has to happen, where's all the money going? There has to be a fiscal transparency. Don't we have a huge amount of administrators within the, we do. Do, within yeah. the DOE? I mean, I'm hearing numbers yeah. that we spend more on on administrators than teachers. I don't know if that's true or not. It is and it isn't. Because everybody yeah. spins it one way Because it, it, can, it can get into the hyperbolic kind okay. of conversation. But there are a lot of administrators. Are they all needed? That would have to be looked at. But as you know, you know we are, and I'll say it, you know, we are extremely um, and umbilically connected to how the labor unions the look exactly. at those job positions. And you and can't, so you, it's, and it's just. And, and how does that work? You, you talked about how the system is failing the students. Right. But what ran through my mind as you say, were saying that is um, it strikes, strikes me that the system is also failing the teachers. It is. Because they're leaving yeah, the so, state. And if, if you talk to teachers, and, and I do, um, even with their, and, and their, 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 their entry salary is not bad. I mean, it, there are teachers leaving Hawaii going to other districts on the mainland and making less, but the cost of living meets that. Yes, right. That, but um, they would even absorb some of that, you know, crappy pay, if you will, for the cost of living if they had freedom in the classroom. Mm. In other words, the one size fits all, which is one size fits nothing, right. you know, testing yeah. to the test or, or right. teaching to the test kind of mentality or not having the freedom and trust 
from the leadership starting at the principal complex area superintendent all the way into the central office if a teacher understands every child in that seat that they have been chartered to deliver education to then let them do it right. there's oversight there's boundaries there's yes. checks and balances but if we want empowered schools in other words empowering teachers to deliver that type of education that kid in the seat needs let them do it if right. we just template them and tell them what to do um, kids learn differently we're from each other yeah so yeah. so I say you know to have empowered school you have to have trust right. if you don't have that you're not going to have the innovation that has to come on board especially in the tech world and we need and we need um, we need principals that get support from the parents and I'll go back there so go underlying yeah. underlying is still parents mom and dad you better both be involved yeah. If you're involved, then your child will be definitely be involved. So that, that that's a must. So we'll we'll come back at, at, at schools in the system. So I'm going to throw one a little not campaign thingy at at you. But <coughs> you're me. all right. No worries. Cool. <laughs> you want me to? <laughs> I know. Um, so Ige in one of his speeches yep. said that um, he was going to create eighty thousand new tech and innovation jobs, paying eighty thousand dollars or more in two thousand and thirty. Now I did the inflation math. And that doesn't, that still gives me McDonald's pay. Yeah. So, I mean, and, 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 and I'm not going to be around 2030 to challenge him that he may or may not have made it. So, so what, what is it we need to do to, to encourage the, the uh, creation of tech within the schools and then having the kids stay here? Yeah. yeah. So, well, first of all, don't sell yourself short. That's only 12 years from now. So, okay. um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, sure. Okay. Yeah. I mean, um, but you know that's a, also a bold statement to make. Eighty thousand dollars, as you know, ninety-three thousand is the new medium income for, for a family yeah. here in yeah. Hawaii. So, so you're so that starting means up that below. You're still, yeah. Well, you're in what in, in ten twenty years, yeah, you're still below today's poverty level. But what I would ask the governor, and I will, is uh, you know how do you propose to do that? Yes. And when you start looking at Hawaii as a state, we are fiftieth in the nation with regards to being kind to new business, either yes. small business yeah. or corporate Tell me business. About it. So. Yeah. How are you going to ins you know, incentivize the yeah. Elon Musks of the world to right. come to Hawaii and build right. their in innovation or think centers? You're not. There's, there's got to be an incentive. There's got to be uh, what is good yeah. for, you know, because in a private-public partnership like that, both of those partners have to have a, a benefit, right? right. Yeah. And uh, I don't think it's impossible, but you've got to loosen a lot of the friction and inhibitors that right now Businesses won't come here. I know Act Two Two One was there, and it was it was a good law with some bad pieces in it. Sure, but instead of just fixing the bad pieces in the law, they just it expanded the whole away. law, yeah. Yeah. which yeah. then just threw the whole but, thing. Yeah. Yeah. and yeah. you know, Elon Musk will set up his business and I, and I use, somewhere yeah. else. And I used well, his name good, because but, it came to but mind. Case, but Case, you know, Case also. I mean, yeah. he AOL. But if you look you at know, the um, built it someplace else. You know, if you look at here. the rate of technology right now, so for people my age, that that curve was manageable, right? I went from rotary rotary dial to push button to cell phone, and we've all kept up, right? I mean, yeah. sometimes you got to catch up a little bit I'm more. I'm not sure, but yeah, the fun nicer. <laughs> That's okay. But the kids today, um, K to 12 kids and kids uh, in undergrad programs, that's a steep curve. Yeah. And if you just look at the advances, for instance in nanotechnology and biotechnology and how those are going to intersect and how they're going to rule the day yep. and I would say in no no five years from now I mean if you look at the artificial intelligence the sensors that they're using that technology in that Whole Foods that they just opened up in Seattle where you just mm -hmm. walk in yeah. and you put your stuff in your basket yeah. and you, you walk, walk out, out and, and it's all done, and it's all it's done. Um, the mobility revolution that is happening it's changing our whole um, mindset. Okay, is, so hang on yeah. a sec. So, 14 minutes is done. Yeah, okay. We said it already. <laughs> so um, we're going to take a short break, pay some bills. Got Ray LaRue here, uh, running for governor, state of yep. Hawaii. Um, good background. I do want to talk to you about Air Force One, though. We're going to mention that in, yes. in the second yes. half. So we'll be back in a minute. This is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness. Match day is no ordinary day. The pitch. Hallowed ground for players and supporters alike. Excitement builds. Game plans are made with responsibility in mind. Celebrations are underway. Ready for kickoff. MLS clubs and our supporters rise to the challenge. We make responsible decisions while we cheer on our heroes and toast their success. Elevate your match day experience. If you drink, never drive. 
Hello, I'm Yukari Kunisue. I'm your host of the new Japanese language show on Think Tech Hawaii called Konnichiwa Hawaii, broadcasting live every other Monday at 2 p.m. Please join us where we discuss important and useful information for the Japanese language community in Hawaii. The show will be all in Japanese. Hope you can join us every other Monday at 2 p.m. Aloha. Hey, aloha. How you doing? Gordo the Texar, Ibashi Talk. Rick's the Fred Rick's. Cole. Ray LaRue, who's uh, running for the governor, state of Hawaii. Um, with some interesting, fresh perspectives on some things that are going on. And before we took the break, um, uh, we were talking about business yeah. in Hawaii and tech business in Hawaii. And if you have a question, you can call us at 808-374-2014. I, I just gave that number out. My brother's going to call, probably. No, 808-374-2014 <laughs> from the shed. Anyway, so you know, we talked about business in Hawaii. So I reached out to this company in the Midwest because mm -hmm. I want to do something here. And I, this, is, this is their response. And I'm going to leave a word out. So it says, Thank you for reaching out to the name of the company. Unfortunately, Hawaii is not a such and such friendly state related to business. Please keep in touch for further updates. So I got immediately re rejected from a Midwest organization where I have a, a, an idea on how, and they're doing it in other states. I have an idea to bring business into here, and, um, and they already know they don't want to come here. In fact, you can almost you know fill in the blank business, but or not even have the blank and just say business friendly. Yeah. Because uh, it is not, and and even um, even some of what I would consider low tech small business, uh, not even getting into the technology sphere. Right. Um, a lot of the folks that I've talked to um, on the Big Island in Maui, who are small business owners, I, I sat down and said, what are the inhibitors? And there are many, um, and 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 there's no, if you would, you know, freshman, sophomore, junior kind of senior advancement to a small, in other words, let a small business get on their feet and be prosperous before you start hitting them over the head with the permitting, the taxes, and everything it else. That, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. There should be a graduated entry into that, that sustainment of, of how you're going to pay the taxes. So, so um, I, I think Hawaii has a, a huge opportunity for tech promotion, not yeah. only in the U.S., but in Asia because of our relationships there. We are the gateway to the Pacific right now. Yeah. If you look at the advances of technology in, in, in other markets such as China, Singapore, uh, Japan certainly, and now Korea, um, you can just see that flying in any out of any one of their airports and coming into our airport. Right. And and we as, you know, people that call Hawaii their home, you know, we love our little airport, right? You come home, you smell, it's, it's but then you get on the wiki wiki if you're coming in internationally and you're like, you know, I just came from Incheon. It wasn't, there was no wiki wiki. In fact, there was a magnet train. So, yeah, I mean. Yeah, it was um, magnet and yeah. magnet from here to the other. Yeah, I know. Oh, now we go down rail. So, so um, tech careers in Hawaii. Yeah. It's going to be a challenge. It, it's only a challenge if you're not willing to do, do, do the investment. Mm -hmm. In other words, you've got to sit down. You've got to find it. You've got to recruit this business and make it such that, Hawaii is the place where you want to build your, your, your think tank, your, right. your innovation center. Your, if you go back to my earlier comment of where this nanotechnology and biotechnology is, for instance, if you look at some of the advancement of microprocessors right now, I mean, they are building processors, or at least about to build processors that are one-tenth the size of a human hair that have the consistency of jello. If you can, and this is, this is not too far out there, but right. if you read some of the folks and if you follow DARPA at all and some of the right. things that they do, I mean, what if you inject this microprocessor into your body and the whole, oh, by the way, this microprocessor has the computing power, of more computing power than anything that we know right now. And its sole purpose was just to hunt down irregular cells in your body and then zap them. Yeah. What, what have you just done? We've just turned yeah. our lives into living 200 years old. Well, yeah. we'll have to deal with that later. But my, my point is that technology <laughs> and the advancement of that and how it's going to touch every phase of our life. And right now, if you can write an algorithm for a task, that job is gone. But what are the other jobs that are going to be born out of that? And, and that's where we can capitalize. And, and these kids coming through a K-12 through system, they know that. Yes. They know this. But if we are continuously in our public education system, and maybe even our private, because I don't know. Um, we're preparing for uh, our past, and uh, that can't be sustained. So, so yeah, I think it's a way, uh, I think you just said something there. You said the way we're educating, our, I would interpret it, but I yeah. heard, the way we're educating our children today is for the past. I, I believe so. And not for the future. Correct. 
our, in fact, you know our I, past. I, I, yeah, the, our past. What we think their yeah. future is. And, you know, you know what? Uh, having grandkids and seeing where they are within the system, and it's not the teacher's fault. I agree. Yeah. But, and I think some of it is, or another is, we know that there, some of the private schools have 3D printers. We don't know that there's any 3D printers in any of the public schools. So I, I would guess it may, I mean, well, I, 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 I reinterpret it as how, how I could, yeah. you know, how and, I, and there may those be, are kind of the, the things of, you know, yeah. where, yes, we are, are or, you know, we are perhaps with our public school system educating in the past. As, and I'm just throwing this out there as are, a way to there are, verbalize. Like I said, high-performing schools in our system where right. principal Absolutely. leaders yes. have said, you know what, yeah. I, know what I, need, I know what I need to do. Why not? Why not? Yeah. Radford. Radford. Um, oh, yeah. People think of all these schools yeah. as really, really problem schools, yeah. but they've got some incredibly In the early, early 2000s, students. Radford was one of our poorest performing high schools, yeah. and now it's one of our highest. One of the highest, yes. So, because um, of technology. And well, not only that, it's just, again, we're not sending our worst kids to school and we're not hiring the worst teachers. Right. So what is the problem? I'll tell you that the problem is we've systemically looked at the wrong things. One size fits all does not fit anything. Yeah. yeah. And then when you start looking at the budget and how we're allocating and otherwise encumbering that budget is upside down as well. So if, if, if school empowerment means trust and that school leader position, right. then that should have some authority in the, fis the fiscal authority as well. In other words, the central office which controls all of that budget process. They'll tell you that most of that is from, you know, 97 cents of every education dollar is going to the classroom. Yeah. Not so. Uh, no, yeah. no, I don't believe that. Yeah. So, now, and we've got four, essentially four districts, right? We have one district. One district. One district and 15 what you can call what we call complex areas. Okay, so oh, complex areas. Complex areas. Oh, they used to be districts, but they're now, now complex, complex areas. Area. So I guess the hierarchy or the chain of command from a central office would be superintendent, a layer of assistant, uh, superintendent, assistant superintendents, okay. 15 complex area superintendents okay. spread out through the state, okay. and under those hang all the schools. All the schools. So, that, so to me, that's kind of an issue, the fact that you've got, why can't they be independent? Is my kind of thought. So I and believe, I'm not, I'm yeah. Not, I'm not you know, you could, like every other state has multiple school districts. Right. Uh, we are the oldest public school system in the nation, by the way. I don't know if you know that. I did not. Um, and we are the, about the 10th largest, depending on the census, but okay. a, anywhere from oldest, 9 to 10. Oldest, 10th largest, um, okay, waiting for where we're standing. Yeah, the only island nation, the only state that is a state-run district. In other words, yeah. okay. you will have yeah. your state department of education. Every state has one to include right. ours. Right. But underneath that, like for Ohio, has something like 1,000 school districts. Wow. So 1,000 superintendents. More like counties. Yeah, or, yeah. Some are very big. Some are very, you know, rural. Um, but you know, we have a large system. Doesn't that per so? But to split that okay, up, okay, to ahead. get back to your point, I think they, uh, I believe they tried to do this during the Lingle administration. Um, right. There are some things within an island state that need to be centralized so that the principal doesn't have that on their plate. And those are the operational logistic type right. things. They, mm -hmm. Principal shouldn't have to worry about paying their utility bill. No. They should pay attention to how they're using yes. electricity, but okay. they shouldn't have to worry about trash coming out of their school. It, those things should just should be centralized. Mm -hmm. Let principals teach, educate, manage your teachers and deliver education. Let the central office take care of how to do that uh, in their plants. Um, if you tried to replicate those central services on each of those districts. If you split it up, just say let's just say five districts. Right. Um, that the way that the state typically does it, it would just we don't have the the resources to do that because of the way we do it. Yeah. But here, I mean, talking about here, resources. You does that mean more? Know, that means more people. Five school boards. Five. Five central oh, offices. Goodness, five. Oh I mean, mm -hmm. you replicate everything five times. Okay, but why are our costs so high? This is a whole other story. Yeah. So, okay, so, um, I mean, what about the relationship between the University of Hawaii, um, I, I don't, colleges, yeah. and the DOE? So, Waipahu's doing some great things with regards right. to getting kids that qualify college credits through the, through the community right. college. And in the system, or the program existed before, but what, uh, what Guy's done is he's got the college to come to them versus trying to find the resources and funds to get the kids to go to the, the, the colleges. Oh, in other okay. words, transportation is always it's a, always a big, factor. big factor. Um, so I think that's, a, that's just a, 
a, a model program uh, that they're doing in Waipahu. With regards to how UH intersects with everything else, assume, especially in the tech world, um, I don't think it's enough. And where we really should be intersecting is with their college of education. We as a state with a teacher shortage should right. be, mm -hmm. okay, what are the incentives that we're going to provide to students in the, in the college of education to commit to the Department of Education for say five years? There's ways to do this right. that have not been tabled, discussed, or, or anything else. Instead, we recruit on the mainland. We hope we get the recruitment coming out of the College of the Jed. But there should be incubator programs. There should be a lot of things immersed in right. our DOE with the College of Education. And but that we were going back to the cookie cutter situation we had before. We were talking about we're just trying to make everybody fit into this box. And exactly. if we get our, our scores are high, then well, we're okay. and, and here's another. Here, you look at some of the disciplines where we are in dire need of in the state. Just take physicians' assistants. Take teachers. Yep. If mm -hmm. we've we've got a very large military spouse uh, population that roll in and out of That's here true. every three or four years, a lot of those spouses are teachers coming from other accreditations in other states. If you're coming from Massachusetts and you've got a Boston teacher credential, which is one of the toughest in the nation to get, yeah. and you come to Kaneohe Bay, Hawaii, or Fort or, or, or uh, Schofield Barracks, Schofield. Yeah. and you can't get a teaching permit in Hawaii, in other words, there's something wrong. Oh yeah, there's definitely something wrong. I think yeah. it's like transferring credits to the University of Hawaii. It should be very, very be one well, step simple. Uh, simple, yeah. simple. Okay, we're gonna. So uh, we're going to digress for just one minute. So sure. you have an interesting, you had an interesting thing in your career. So you, you're a <laughs> Marine for 30 years, and yeah. I got to, I got to ask you this. Sure. So you flew Air Force One for multiple presidents. Marine One. Marine One. Okay. Yeah. Marine One for multiple presidents. That means landing on the backyard of the White House. Yeah. Yes. Yes. The lawn. So how was that? <laughs> so it, 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 it never got old. In fact, um, I've done plenty of interviews on on this subject. Yeah. Um, and people always ask, you know, well, you know, where is your favorite place to land? What's the, the, the most fun you've, well, it's always fun, aside from the responsibility of it all. But whenever, you know, and I, I said this on another program not too, too long ago, you know, when you come up the Potomac. And, oh, I've seen them coming up. And it doesn't matter if it's night, day, winter, or summer, and you get to make that right turn at the Washington Monument and set up. Uh, on the backyard of the White House, it, it just it never ever got old. Well, I'm so, getting chicken yeah. skin just hearing you talk about it. Well, that's that's pretty awesome. Yeah. So, is there a website where we can find there out? There is. It's uh, trustbackingovernment.org. So it's trustbackingovernment.org. So I thought it was a little long, but I thought it was no, succinct. It's, it's, it's there. That definitely will will hold true. And um, like we give every one of our guests um, an autograph solo cup. So when you're up there accepting your, um, when, you, when you're the governor and you're accepting it, I would expect this cup to be sitting there. I can just hear your marketing people going, no way. Anyway, anyway this Thank is you great. very much. Thank you so much, I, Ray. I will bring it back on November 7th. All right, awesome. That's great. So good luck out there. Thank you, sir. Um, thank you for, for doing this. I mean. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a steep climb, but it's one I believe in. All right, I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to seeing yeah. this. It's gonna be fun now. This, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to be there, you know, and uh, Bringing a libation to pour into your cup. <laughs> there we go. Perfect. We're all set. I didn't know you were a Republican. You went to Berkeley. <laughs> anyway, this is Gordon of the Texar. We've got Rick Stefanmeister. Ray LaHur. Ray LaHur. La I'm going to get it right. Ray LaHur, who's running for governor of State La of Hawaii. LaRue. 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 La yeah. Ray LaRue, running for governor of State of Hawaii. And um, we'll have him back on the show, hopefully, in the not too distant future. And like we say at the end of every show, one, two, three. How, How are you doing? doing?